friends, hope you're well, and I certainly hope you're all wearing your tin foil hats. Uh, well, hang on, you, you made that face. Are you maybe wondering why someone needs to wear a tin foil hat? Well, I'm rather surprised you asked. I'm sure you know about the insulative electrical contravenance circling your head during thought that could be modified or controlled by a 5G tower. And so the tin foil hat, it's, it's like magic. It has magical properties. It is therefore here to insulate your brain waves from telepathic impactive impingement. Yes. Using big words that uh, anyone can say you can make anything sound like they are true. That's why today we won't be using big words. Well, maybe we will. I don't really know at this point. And so today's topic, let's talk microwaves and Wi-Fi. Then let's test if a microwave, now, now you've got the answer to why the microwave is there. Let's check if it has any effect on your Wi-Fi by doing away with conspiracy theories from 1908 and do some real home science. Yes, this is, this is a science channel now. Okay, quickly, let's understand what is a microwave and then dang it, if we are going to get to testing. Now, microwaves are a form of electromagnetic radiation. That is, they are waves of electrical and magnetic energy moving together through space and time. Space. Electromagnetic radiation spans a broad spectrum from very long radio waves to very short gamma rays. The human eye can only detect a small portion of the spectrum called visible light. Now, a radio detects a different portion of the spectrum and an X-ray machine uses yet another portion. You see, visible light, microwaves, and radio frequencies, which is usually said RF, uh, radiation are forms of non-ionizing radiation. Non-ionizing radiation does not have enough energy to knock electrons out of atoms. That is where 5G towers sit, let's be clear on that. And then we've got X-rays, who are a form of ionizing radiation and can do that. Now, if you were to be exposed to ionizing radiation, that can alter atoms and molecules and cause damage to cells in organic matter. Microwaves are used to detect speeding cars and to send telephone and television communication. Industry uses microwaves to dry and cure plywood, to cure rubber and resin, to raise bread and donuts, and to cook potato chips after all. But the most common consumer use of microwave energy is a microwave oven. Microwaves have three characteristics that allow them to be used for cooking. They are reflected by metal, the little metal thing inside. They pass through glass, paper, plastic, and similar materials, and they are absorbed by food. So then microwaves are produced inside the microwave oven by an electron tube called magnetron. <laughs> magnetron, sounds like a transformer. The microwaves are reflected within the metal interior of the oven where they are absorbed by food. Microwaves cause water molecules, and we've got a water cup right here ready to go, uh, to vibrate, producing heat that cooks the food. That's why foods are high in water content, like fresh vegetables can be cooked more quickly than other foods. The microwave energy is changed to heat as it is absorbed by the food and does not make food radioactive or contaminated as some things might lead you to believe. Although heat is produced directly in the food, microwave ovens do not cook food from the inside out. When thick foods are cooked, the outer layers are heated and cooked primarily by microwaves, while the inside is cooked mainly by the conduction of heat from the hot outer layers. That is why the center is usually cold. So to summarize, microwave ovens produce microwaves that make food vibrate. There you have it. You can, you know, those vibrations, do they cause issues with Wi-Fi? Or, well, let's, let's have a look. So what do we know about Wi-Fi? It's obviously a wireless form of communication. It is after all a radio frequency. So the 802.11 standard provides several distinct radio frequencies, ranges for the Wi-Fi. But the main two bands for communication are 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz. This frequency is considerably higher than the frequency used for cell phones, walkie-talkies, and televisions. The higher frequencies allows the signal to carry more data. Signals operating in these frequencies are too high for humans to hear and too low for humans to see. Thus, radio waves are not noticed by humans. Surprise! Otherwise, you see these things floating around everywhere. <laughs> the frequency impacts the propagation of radio waves. Theoretically, higher frequency signals propagate over shorter ranges than lower frequency signals. In practice, However, the range of different frequency signals might be the same or higher frequency signals might propagate further than lower frequency signals. For example, a 5G signal transmitted at a higher transmit power might go further than a 2G or 2.4G signal transmitted at a lower power, especially if electrical noise in the area impacts the 5G part of the radio spectrum. Less than 
2.4 G's portion of the spectrum, which is generally the case. Okay, so let's now look at where Wi-Fi and microwave ovens sit on the spectrum. As you can see, the reason behind this problem is quite simple. Both Wi-Fi and microwave ovens operate at the same frequency, i.e. 2.4 GHz. Note that microwave ovens do not transfer any data. I mean, that's not sending anything out there, is it? <laughs> but still radiates signal in the unlicensed 2.4 GHz industrial, scientific and medical ISM band. So let's do some tests. We're going to give it a try on the 2.4 gigahertz connection and then the 5G connection, obviously while the oven is on and off. So let's start with a 5G connection at off, obviously. So let's tap go and let's see what happens. So we've got a pretty good result at 57 down and 20 up. That's pretty reasonable for a, a midday connection on the weekend. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna test it again, but we're gonna turn the actual oven on. So, here we go. And I'm only gonna put water in there. And to not make sure that anything explodes, I'm gonna put the cover on too. All right. Now that was about 30 seconds. So if we put that on for a minute and do the test again, I'm sure it'll be fine. So let's do this. As the oven is on, let it warm up and we'll put the phone somewhere here. Remember, it's still recording the screen. I mean, this is ridiculously close. You know, here we go. Let's see what happens. We've got 40 seconds on there. The timer is going and we've got the test going right here. That's well, looking pretty good. Will it actually do anything? You just wait. I kind of know the answer, but the answer is, well, it's actually a little bit different. So let's go and we've got the test is finished. Ooh, here we go. <laughs> the results are a little bit interesting. We've got 57 down again and 21 up. It's actually a higher <laughs> upload. We've got a higher jitter at 1.8 and the ping is pretty much the same. But what I wanted you to notice is that as the upload line goes, you can see that it's actually fluctuating a little bit. And I saw the little arrow go up and down. So now let's try 2.4 gigahertz. So we're gonna connect to the 2.4 gigahertz network of the Wi-Fi network, I suppose. And I believe I have it called as Patter Home 2G. So we know it's 2G. And the password. Now this is the band that is most affected by a microwave. And this is actually the one where we're gonna hopefully get some results. Let's run a speed test just by itself and let's go for that. This is a 2.4 gigahertz with no microwave oven on right now. And now let's test 2.4 gigahertz at the same time as this is on and we can't even connect. This is pretty incredible. This is pretty darn incredible. As you can see, the actual things that's happened here is completely messing with this connection. And even though it was already terrible before because it's 2.4 gigahertz and it's at a fair distance, if you are near a microwave and it's on at the same time, the download speed and everything will just completely fry itself up. So what have we learned to this? Oh, and actually my connection to the Wi-Fi has also died over here, just FYI. Hopefully it's still recording. Let's stop this now. And as soon as I stop it, hopefully something will happen here. My connection to the camera has resumed. And, well, I don't know, I might have to restart this. There we go, something is happening. Look at that, my folks. So, conclusion time for this test. 5 GHz Wi-Fi does not matter and it is not affected by your microwave. So if you're using the 5 GHz on your devices, you know when you say like 2G or 5G in your Wi-Fi home, you will not have any issues with your microwave. If you're using the 2.4 GHz connection on your Wi-Fi router or your modem and you have another device that's using the same thing, if you are close to the microwave. and, and for my example, I'm ridiculously close. It completely killed the connection. But if your microwave is between you and the modem, it actually will affect your connection, but only on the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. So there you have it. In theory, a well-shielded branded microwave should not let any microwave escape, but it does. 
even though it's built like it shouldn't. You know when your parents used to say, don't stand next to the microwave? Well, there is a reason, but it just won't affect you, really. So in principle, it is only affecting 2.4 gigahertz connections in your home and Wi-Fi. So if you see a lot of articles saying, hey, turn off your microwave, there's actually a better solution. So you don't need to panic, you don't need to go you know, move everything around. Just know that you can connect some of your devices to the 5G network and most newer devices will actually be able to connect to the network without no problems and it won't be affected by the kids at home running the microwave like crazy while you're trying to work. So, and of course you don't need to start unplugging things either. But if your modem is somewhere in close proximity of this, I would suggest moving it somewhere else, or at least moving the microwave a little bit further away. Friends, Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this quick video. Catch you all next time. If you like this video, then tap that like button. If you would like to see more, then please consider subscribing. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks and bye.